planning to go for higher studies in Canada? The Canada GIC process is a compulsory requirement for all international students who wish to study in Canada under the SDS or the Student Direct Scheme programs recommended by the Canadian government. Hello everyone, this is Pratibha from Gyanthan and in this video, I will throw light on the Canada GIC process. Before moving ahead, I would sincerely request you to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to keep yourself notified on our latest videos on abroad education. So before we take a look at the exact procedure which students need to follow regarding the Canada GIC process, let's understand the concept of the GIC account. So GIC or the Guaranteed Investment Certificate is an investment scheme which is recommended for international students who wish to study in Canada for study programs which come under the student direct stream. All international students are required to deposit their one year's living expenses into a Canada-based bank in order to qualify for a student visa to study in Canada. So GIC accounts are basically savings accounts which offer fixed returns to all the eligible candidates over a period of time. This is a compulsory requirement which all students need to fulfill if they plan on pursuing a course under the Student Direct Scheme. Only the bank registered in Canada can offer these services to international students who have currently been enrolled in Canadian universities or colleges. This video will give you the complete details of how to get GIC certificate through each of these lenders. Now, I will tell you what is recommended GIC Canada amount for international students. So the Canadian Embassy has recommended a minimum of 10,000 Canadian dollars as the GIC amount for Canada student visas. All candidates need to deposit this GIC amount for Canada student visa. Students can deposit anywhere between 10,000 Canadian dollars to 50,000 Canadian dollars in their respective savings accounts at a time. So the basic Canada GIC process requires students to deposit a minimum of 10,000 Canadian dollars with any of the lenders registered and recognized by the Canadian Embassy. These lenders deposit some portion of the said GIC Canada amount into a savings account and the remaining amount is utilized to open a non-redeemable account from which the students will be able to receive a nominal amount plus any interest which may have accumulated over the prescribed time frame. Now, let's move on to what is a non-redeemable GIC account. So, a non-redeemable GIC account basically refers to an account in which students get to invest a certain sum for a particular length of time and get to enjoy the benefits of a fixed interest rate for that period of time. Once the term is over, students get to encash the remaining GIC amount along with the applicable interest for the same period. So let us understand what is the procedure or the process for opening a GIC account. So candidates need to begin the process of opening a GIC account at least a month before they apply for a Canada student visa. The general procedure followed by all the banks is more or less similar. Here is a basic outline of how students can get their proof of GIC amount for Canada student visa. So the first step is to register for a GIC account with any of the banks which are located in Canada. This procedure can be done online. Following this, upon successful creation of their GIC account login, respective banks send the investment account number and wire transfer details to students 
via the individual secure email services. So once they receive their GIC account number and wire transfer details from their respective lenders, candidates may send the Canada GIC amount via wire transfer from their home country to the bank with which they had registered for a GIC account. This process may roughly take about 10 to 12 days. All the banks charge a separate service fee for their GIC services. The final amount which is prescribed to the candidate is including this fee. So out of the 10,000 Canadian dollars, 2,000 Canadian dollars is provided to students as the initial setup fee. The remaining 8,000 Canadian dollars is deposited into the investment account. Students will be able to receive a monthly sum of around 667 Canadian dollars plus any applicable interest to support their expenses for the remaining period of their stay in Canada. So next comes that once the payment of the GIC amount has been successfully completed, Banks send a letter confirming the receipt of the GIC amount payment via email to the concerned students. So candidates may submit this letter at the time of applying for the Canada student visa. Now let us understand the actions to be taken by students on arriving in Canada. So the first thing to do when students arrive in Canada, they will be required to personally visit their respective banks in which they have opened their Canada GIC account, along with certain documents for a final verification procedure and to activate their GIC student account. Post verification of relevant documents by the bank authorities, a personal deposit account will be created in the student's name and the initial setup fees of 2000 Canadian dollars will be deposited into this account. The balance amount of 8,000 Canadian dollars will be deposited into a non-redeemable GIC account. Once the students have completely utilized the initial setup cost, they will be able to withdraw their monthly allowance from the non-redeemable GIC account. So now let's move on to what is the Canada GIC amount refund process. It is possible for students to get their GIC account amount refunded from their respective banks in the following situations. The first, if their study permit has been declined. Second, if the application of admission has been declined. Or if the student has withdrawn from enrollment into the respective university before or after arrival in Canada. The Canada GIC refund policy implemented by all the banks is mostly similar. So candidates need to follow the steps that I'm about to talk about in order to get their GIC amount reimbursed. So the first thing that you do is your students will be required to provide relevant documents supporting their reasons for applying for the refund. Now, the list of documents to be provided by candidates differs from lender to lender. Once all the documents have been verified successfully, banks will initiate the refund process. As soon as the refund process has been completed successfully, the respective banks send a confirmation email regarding the sale. The entire Canada GIC refund process may take up to four weeks. Banks may levy extra charges for the same. Hence, students need to cater to the same while applying for their refund. It's a very common question. That is GIC included in a Canada education loan? If not, then how can it be included? So now that you have just heard us about how Canada GIC accounts work, it must be clear that the GIC amount is nothing but the student's living expenses for a year. This is automatically included in the education loan. So while calculating the total expenses, students need to multiply this GIC amount by the total duration of their course 
and accordingly apply for an education loan. Next, I'll tell you what are the embassy's criteria for student visas. So getting a Canadian visa without any hurdles is an important step in the Canada education loan process. The first step towards getting a student visa requires students to fulfill the criteria set by the Canadian Embassy for loan applicants. As mentioned earlier, one of these requirements is to deposit the Canada GIC amount and to provide a receipt of payment for the first semester's tuition fees. As I spoke about earlier, every student who wishes to study in Canada needs to deposit around 10,000 Canadian dollars into their respective GIC accounts. When you convert this amount into Indian national rupees, it comes close to around 5 lakhs. Similarly, on an average, a student's first semester tuition fees amounts to about 5 lakhs as well. So in all, the student needs to arrange for at least 10 lakhs INR before they even apply for a student visa. So the point that needs to be considered while applying for an education loan is what I'm about to discuss now. So for those who are funding their higher education with the help of an education loan, a pre-visa disbursement serves the purpose. So what is a pre-visa disbursement? Let's talk about it. As the name suggests, this is the loan amount disbursed by the lending banks to the students before their visa is approved. This amount is required by students in order to purchase a GIC account and to pay at least one semester's tuition fees to the university, which is a mandate set by the Canadian High Commission. Those who are borrowing an education loan from NBFCs can get this disbursement without any hurdles. However, government banks generally hesitate in issuing this amount prior to the student's visa application without any guarantee. Hence, it is important to ask your banking official whether they transfer the loan amount to the embassy-approved Canadian bank accounts through a wire transfer before applying for a loan. Those who have previously applied to nationalized banks through Gyanthan do not face this problem. Hence, it is best advised that you approach these banks through our financial officers for education loans. This way, you can get your pre-visa disbursements without any problems. In the end, let's understand the Canada Education Loan Timeline. As in the case, most abroad education loans, time is an important factor. Since the medical check, purchasing a GIC account and depositing the tuition fees takes up more than a month's time, it is recommended that you apply for an education loan as early as possible. Once you get an admission letter from your respective college or university, immediately apply for an education loan. It is recommended that you consider at least one week's time for the GIC account related procedures and an additional six to eight weeks for the visa process and then apply for the education loan. When it comes to the disbursing of education loans from government banks, this process may also take its own sweet time. So that's it for this video guys. I hope I was able to explain to you the GIC process and all its features in detail. If you have any queries, please post them in the comments section. Thanks a lot.